the Dow hanging on by a thread. It's hanging on by a thread. We're up seven points right now. Let's face it, today the market has been mostly spinning its wheels, uh, but you know, it's been uh, really a phenomenal, phenomenal week. And to the big winner today, uh, and that's kept the Dow and the S&P a little bit higher, energy uh, leading the way. Exxon Mobil just absolutely crushing it on consensus. Chevron, they're pumping out a record 2.9 billion barrels of oil a day. So energy doing very well. Uh, but the market, here's one of the problems, folks. It's right there at the top of the resistance range. And I got to tell you, it means that in my mind, we're going to see a massive leg to the upside. I'm talking about a huge move after a short pause or a meaningful pullback. Although I'm not sure where we test the, the Christmas Eve lows. But let's ask our next guest because they're all experts on this stuff. Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo from All Star Charts, JC Peretz, and BubbaTrading.com Chief Strategist Todd Horowitz. Todd, I got to start with you. It's been a while since we've talked. Uh, you were pessimistic. You were, you know, uh, just, uh, uh, you know, you were like the Scrooge, man. And, and I mean, uh, are you in this market yet? Are you, are you, are we, you know, what are you doing right now? What should our audience be doing? What's up, Charles? You've been on. You've been in fuego. You've been so hot. I watch you every day. You've been firing it up. You know, listen to me, Charles. As an investor, I've never gotten out. Okay, I don't get out as an investor. As a trader, I'm still trying to look for a spot to sell it. I think this market's going to test the lows again before we get the next meaningful leg up. But as an investor, and I try to tell all investors, don't watch the day-to-day -day action. The market will drive you crazy. Over the long haul, the markets go up eight percent year over year. That's a fact. Getting good companies, good stocks. Listen to Charles Payne, and you'll be. <laughs> Good. And uh, uh, on that note, though, what are some of the longer term uh, positions that you're holding? Todd, I'm holding I'm holding Apple. I'm holding Amazon. I'm holding Facebook. I'm holding Amberella. I'm holding a, 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 whole, a, whole, a, a whole litany of stocks, a whole wagon full, which I continue to buy all the time. I, I buy something almost every day. Right. I buy a stock or I use some sort of strategy to get into a stock because I want to net net at the end. I want to be long the market, although in the short term, from a trader standpoint, I'm looking to short the market right here. JC, you're the all star charters here. What's what are the, what, what's the charts telling you right now? And what's today's action specifically telling you the fact that we gave up an almost 200 point rally on the Dow? You know, I thank you for having me again, Charles. Um, you know, for me, we really respect weekly closing prices, right? They're very important. But you know what we respect even more is the monthly closes, which we had yesterday. And we really went out at the highs and a lot of major indexes, just a ton of strength in January. Um, and then sure, maybe at some point in the future, will we retest the lows? Possibly, but I don't. I think that's consensus that we have to. I don't necessarily agree that we absolutely have to. Um, I think we continue to weigh the evidence, and from what we see here, uh, the path of least resistance in stocks is still higher. I think the higher probability is that the major indexes retest those former highs. All right, I'm going to get back to you for some specifics on that. And you know, Melissa, I, I agree with JC the idea that you know you don't always have to retest. We didn't retest the March 2009 lows, and there are literally hundreds of thousands of would-be investors still waiting for that. Remember, we had that huge buying that came in right after the Christmas holiday. So I'm saying if we go down there, we're still holding the uptrend. I thought we were holding the uptrend the whole month of December, and I turned out to be right. Because if you go back and look at it, look at the rally that we've had since right after Christmas right. into You're January. You're right about that. We did hold, but when do we break out? Because when do we, we are break butting out? up against, we, cr we crossed the 50-day on, on the Dow. Uh, we crossed the 50-day, I think, on all. We're crossing the 50-day on, on the 200-day moving average on the Dow. So we've got to be right there at a major when breakout we are, point. We're over that point. Now, as far as getting in, if you're in already, fine. If you never got out, fine. You had some pain in December. If you want a confirmation to get in that's going to take it right up to the highs, well, we're not there yet. Now, if you're looking at the 200-period moving average, which we're bumping up against, if you're talking about resistance, here's my thoughts on that. Don't worry about that. And here's why. Because we are in an uptrend, and when you're in an uptrend, there is no resistance. Every resistance will be gone over when you're in an uptrend, just like there's no support that's going to hold when you're in a downtrend, and that's the tip of the day, and that's great advice. So if you're in, don't worry about it. Even if we pull back, we're going to get over this area that you're talking about that we're bumping up against under the 200 per moving average because we're still in an uptrend, and therefore, that's really not resistance. There really isn't any resistance. You know, you got to love uh, someone that says that's the tip of the day and great advice, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Todd, I guess you grade your own advice, too, uh, and we, we consider it to be great. What should we be looking for, though? January was phenomenal. A lot of people talk about the January effect. As goes January, so goes the rest of the year. It's really a pretty good, uh, it's a pretty good indicator. 
Uh, what would you be looking for to become just even more optimistic as a trader on the upside? Well, I'd like to see a, I'd like to see a little bit of a pullback to see how we're going to test these lows. You right. know, we should consolidate here for a while. Now, again, you mentioned it a few minutes ago. Either we're going to consolidate and break up to the upside, or consolidate and break down. You know, we look at the, I look at the market in three phases. Right now, we should enter a consolidation phase, which I think we've been in for the last few days. I would like to see it stretch farther. Now, eventually, if we start to hold and make higher lows within that consolidation, I think we will break the next leg up. I just right now don't see it. I think this looks more like a retailer fear of missing out rally and not a real rally. The volume has not been very good in this entire rally going all the way back to Christmas Eve. JC, give us some names that you're looking at there because you're, you're very optimistic. I wouldn't say I'm very optimistic. I think it really comes down to defining your time horizon, right? So, sure. yeah, you know, as Todd said, on average, the S&P returns 8% a year, but the S&P never returns 8% a year, right? We don't live in an average world. So I think it's going to be a little bit more complicated than that. We are literally right in the middle of a massive range. To the upside in the S&P, you're looking at 3,000. To the downside, you're looking at 2,400. Where are we today? 2,700, literally right in the middle. But, so, but yes. to your point, though, not every stock is going to participate, right? Right. It, as much as of a cliche that this is, it is still a stock picker's market. Is there certain sectors that you think have a better chance of making money uh, this year than others? Yeah, Charles, it's a market of stocks, right? And I think that we're going to be in this range that I just mentioned, a massive wide range. And that's just the world that we live in. But to your point, yeah, I think there's sectors that do well, some that do right. not. We I the think banks. the key the key is going to be regional banks and broker dealers. <laughs> okay, if banks and broker dealers. Highs, less, less, than a ago, I, less than a minute to go, guys, real quick. Uh, Melissa, and now if I can see if I can get everyone in. If we get a trade deal and there's no government shutdown, what does that do for the market? I think the market's going to blow if we if we actually get a trade deal. But if we don't get a trade right. deal by that March 1st deadline, then I think it's not going to mean the market's going to break the downtrend. I mean, the uptrend. It doesn't mean we're going to go into a downtrend, but it means that we could go Todd, down and drop off. Same question. Trade deal, no uh, shutdown. Listen, I think that... I think China's already priced in that there's going to okay. be a deal. I think the market gets one big spike up and sells off after that. JC, tweet, tweet us at CV Payne. We'll share it with the audience that way because we got to give it to Lawrence Simonetti. 